Let's bring in Jonathan Katz, Director of the uh, Democracy Initiatives and also from the uh, German Marshall Fund of the United States. Good evening to you, sir. Um, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, uh, spoke earlier to say the world is now facing a moment of peril, specifically about Ukraine. Um, to what extent do you, do you agree with what he's saying? Uh, certainly, um, it's a, a moment of deep peril. Uh, Russia is threatening Ukraine. Uh, the Mr. Putin also is threatening not only Ukraine, but anybody that was previously part of the Soviet Union, and he said it quite clearly. What the Secretary General of the UN also said about LNR and DNR is that it is impossible uh, for Russia to say that it's sending in peacekeeping troops uh, into these regions. That is not true. They're not there for peace. Um, they're there to threaten Ukraine. And of course, they have closed the door in the Minsk process, uh, which leaves us with little diplomatic room to maneuver. Can I just let you have the words here of Denis Pushilin, leader of the Russian-backed separatists, saying, he says, optimal variant would be, optimal variant's the phrase he used, would be for Ukrainian forces to voluntarily leave these self-proclaimed states. The fact that he can say something like that, what does that say about the whole mindset? And what does that say about what Russian is do Russia is doing behind the scenes? Well, you know, it was just reported that you know, Russian convoys are headed to to uh, to the Donbass, um, and clearly these these separatists uh, these these are illegal states, um, not recognized by anybody in the international community, uh, and these so-called leaders, separatists, terrorists, whatever you want to call them, feel emboldened. Uh, the fact that that Vladimir Putin has threatened and is threatening Ukraine with uh, close to two hundred thousand troops, I'm sure that makes them feel good. But if you're in Ukraine today, uh, you have to be deeply concerned. On one hand, it's great to see the international community, the United States, Europe come together to, uh, to push for additional sanctions. Uh, but I think additional support is needed to really support Ukraine. And I think we're, we're on the verge of what we would say is Cold, Cold War Part Two, uh, which is a concern for Europe and the United States. Uh, it goes beyond the security of, of Ukraine right now. Uh, Jonathan, uh, Vladimir Zelensky. Uh, repeating his words when he spoke earlier alongside his Polish and Lithuanian counterparts, repeating his words that he wants to see Ukraine come into NATO. Now, clearly, this is a uh, red rag to a bull where Vladimir Putin is concerned. He's drawn a line about that one. He says that is not acceptable at all to anybody uh, in his side uh, of the, the, the argument. Um, are we seeing from Z Zelensky an element of desperation here? He's actually crying out for more help from the West. I, look, this is a, it's been a line of, of President Zelensky at the Munich Security Conference. He spoke about this. This isn't the first time since he's elected that he's been advocating for uh, Ukraine's NATO membership. Uh, Russia's actions are not about NATO enlargement. They're not about Ukraine uh, and, you know, its aspirations to join NATO. Um, it's, it's about Mr. Putin's desire to recreate an empire to destroy uh, the current European security environment and NATO. And so the policies that we're seeing, this is a lot of disinformation and spin on his part. When he inv uh, invaded and illegally annexed Crimea uh, in 2014, it wasn't about NATO. When he did the same in the Donbass with close to 14,000 dead Ukrainians over the past eight years, it hasn't been about NATO enlargement. Uh, so uh, Mr. Zelensky has every right as an independent country, sovereign country, to seek and choose the alliances that it wants. And of course, NATO has the decision amongst its member states to decide who joins. NATO has clearly kept the door open, and this is across the board. All NATO member states have reiterated their open door policy. Um, I don't think it's an act of desperation. I think it's just something that the Ukrainians understand that in order to have security, when you have a neighbor that is threatening like it is right now, uh, it's better to be an alliance that provides that security. Why shouldn't the Ukrainians have that same type of security uh, as, as Poland does, as France does, as the United States does? It's no wonder because they have an autocrat ruling across the border that seeks their destruction. Uh, I, would, I would want to join NATO as well. Indeed. And of course, some say this has been going on since 2014. Others say it's been going on since the breakup of the Soviet Union itself, because that was the very thing that gave Ukraine this propulsion towards being a sovereign state, which certain people in the Russian side of things will not accept. Vladimir Putin chief among them, given what he has written recently about this long-standing claim that Russia has to, uh, to Ukraine along those lines. 
In that time since the breakup of the Soviet Union, many Russian figures, oligarchs, have prospered. They put their money in the West. They've spread their business wings far and wide. Is this something that's going to change, do you think, in the years to years ahead because of this? Yeah. Maybe th their activities will be blocked, changed, they'll be sent back yeah. in some way? Yeah, I think that's absolutely what, what's happening now is that uh, those avenues for Russia and Russians to invest in the West are going to close. And I don't think this is not just a momentary situation. Uh, when we look at what's taking place right now, this will fundamentally change how Russia engages externally in terms of its economy uh, and closing down these doors for corrupt actors, also for the money that fuels Putin's war machine is critically important. And so I think this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of sanctions, restrictions on Russians, on uh, Russian business, particularly oligarchs. And I did want to just say something. You mentioned that that Russia, uh, that that this current situation harkens back to the, you know, the end of the Cold War, the end of the Soviet empire. Let's let's remember that the Budapest Memorandum, when, when Ukraine willingly gave up nuclear weapons, uh, was meant as a signal of recognition of, of its sovereignty and its security. Uh, and this is something that Russia, when it when it comes back and says, and Mr. Putin says, you know, uh, that that Ukraine is not a set. It was actually Russia recognizing Ukraine as a state. So um, this is laughable. Uh, these were excuses by uh, somebody who I think has become delusional in his desire to to regain an empire at all costs, and, and with the loss of of tens of thousands, if not millions, at stake. Uh, so the the West sanctions are critically important. This is just the tip of the iceberg and what's going to happen in terms of economic engagement with Russia. And, and it can't happen soon enough. From the German Marshall Fund of the United States, Jonathan Katz, director of the uh, Democracy Initiatives. Thank you so very much for joining Thank us here in France 24. Thank you for sharing your analysis of the situation with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.